Manchester United are in complete shambles. And to be honest, I'm not really that shocked. So over the weekend, we just saw the usual Premier League matchup between Manchester United and Liverpool, where Liverpool scored four goals in the first half. You know, just the huge. So I just felt like it'd be a good idea to finally not have to laugh at my club for once and laugh at someone else's club. But before we get into this video, if we can hit 150 likes, that'd be cool. I want to briefly talk about the Atalanta and Villarreal matches before I talk about the Liverpool match. I kind of want to build up to the Liverpool match. Now, as we all know, Manchester United came back against Villarreal and Atalanta. Both pretty incredible comebacks, I can't lie. You know, of course, you had to have Ronaldo cap off both comebacks. And you know, that's what Manchester United fans are expecting to happen, Ronaldo basically bailing out the club. And those comebacks are incredible, don't get me wrong, but they really don't tell you the bigger picture. Manchester United looked awful for the most part. Atalanta, for example, had plenty of opportunities to basically finish the game by the end of the half. Unfortunately, their finishing wasn't exactly that great. Atalanta, on the other hand, had a two-goal advantage, and Manchester United did get one back early on in the second half, but then Atalanta had a very good opportunity to make it three. And I get these are what-ifs, but there are plenty of them. Are these undeserved wins? Not particularly, but they show a very massive weakness in the Manchester United side that got absolutely exposed against Liverpool. It kind of reminds me of like Brazil in the 2014 World Cup where they're just absolutely fraudulent. And it's quite fitting that one of the United players is named Fred. But going into the Manchester United Liverpool match, I knew Liverpool were going to win. Did I think they were going to win by this much? Probably not, but I mean... I won't complain, I got a lot of FPL points. But at the beginning of the match, you know, United had a pretty decent opportunity, three minutes played, and then it only just went downhill from there. And it wasn't just a gradual downhill slope, it was the very next minute. I'm gonna try my best to show you some images while I talk about these goals. It's gonna be a little bit difficult because, as you know, Content ID, the Premier League, they both f***ing suck. But that first goal for Liverpool, was way too easy. I have no idea why Aaron Wan-Bissaka is pressing up that far high that early on into the match, because then it just triggers a whole domino effect throughout the entire rest of the defensive system. United's whole defensive line was basically defending the right flank now. You had Lindelof that was now shifting into a right back position, Maguire was defending like my home refrigerator on its last spark of electricity, and it just leaves Luke Shaw in no man's land in a two-on-one versus Mo Salah and Keita. So we don't have the capacity. So yeah, it's 1-0 to Liverpool, things are not looking great already at Old Trafford, but it only gets worse because then Diogo Jota makes it two in the 13th minute. There's been a conversation about the lack of pressing which we'll talk about a little bit later in this video but what about the lack of defending? Who is Maguire even marking here? The grass? I get he's coming off injury but there's no way the injuries just decimated the brain cells too. The third goal we see is just fantastic passing sequences between Firmino, Keita, Henderson, Salah, and Jota. It was just f***ing magnificent to watch. In the words of Jem Wolf himself, Football. United got a little bit unlucky with the deflection, but I mean, I feel like maybe a couple of those defenders could have had better reaction timing. But you know, it's 3-0 in the 37th minute. Is this a f***ing joke? I don't even think we had it this bad against Manchester City. Actually, I'll, I'll take that back. And then right before halftime, Mo Salah makes it 4-0 to Liverpool, and he has a brace. Second half comes around, and Salah completes his hat-trick as my jubilation skyrockets knowing I've captained this man. But we have to give all the props to Jordan Henderson's beautiful ball of dreams to Mo Salah in the theater of dreams. And then after that fifth goal, Liverpool didn't really push to find any more, which was kind of unfortunate, because they definitely could have scored like 10. But unfortunately, this is Jurgen Klopp with the Liverpool side whose depth is still a little bit questionable, not exactly a Pep Guardiola who can basically sub on the Avengers. Oh yeah, I think Pogba made like some kind of cameo. And judging by that smile, those talks with United sound more like a transfer to PSG next summer. Speaking of discipline, United had a lack thereof. 10 fouls and 7 yellow cards. 7. Also, Someone please free De Gea. I refuse to believe David De Gea deserves some kind of fate like that. Just let him leave, on a free. Please, 
for the sake of his humanity. Stats wise of this match, uh, <laughs> Oh boy. Liverpool made a total of 645 successful passes in comparison to United's only 321. United also had as many successful tackles as goals scored against them. Oh, and why don't we just talk a little bit more about United's rankings in terms of, you know, their defense. 18th in clean sheets. 20th in tackles per game. I thought Arsenal were down bad. I, I take it all back. I take it all back. But I don't understand why Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is so adamant on that two-man midfield of McFred. Like, he played this against a Liverpool side in incredible form. Like, what the hell were you expecting? I saw this formation on Twitter that I probably would have created in, like, FIFA 18. It probably would have performed better than what we saw on Sunday. But how about we stop talking about Manchester United for at least three seconds. Liverpool were fantastic. Everyone's gonna be talking about Mo Salah as he scored the very first hat-trick at Old Trafford that wasn't by a Manchester United player, but how about we talk a little bit more about Nabi Keita? Because honestly, I, I think he was the better player throughout the entire match until he unfortunately got injured. He had four key passes, three interceptions, and of course, a goal and an assist. But how about the overall bigger picture when it comes to Manchester United going forward? I think we can all agree that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is being bailed out by high-end talent practically every single week now. And signing Ronaldo 100% confirmed that. Ever since signing Ronaldo, Manchester United's whole system has been completely out of whack. Because now, instead of revolving around one concept of high pressing, it just revolves around him. And you can definitely tell that from just, you know, the expressions Ronaldo has on the pitch. Every single time he doesn't get the ball, he does this. You'll notice in a lot of matches for Manchester United that there will be a player on the ball, he has plenty of really great options, and he passes it to Ronaldo. Ronaldo isn't exactly the worst option, but there's definitely better options. And as I said before, pressing was so important to this United side last season, and it's completely gone away. This team averaged 24.9 team presses per game, and now it's gone down to 16.4. Ronaldo isn't exactly a player who's going to press with his life. He's 36 for God's sake. So you got a system of nine players disjointed and all versus a hungry Liverpool side. And if I'm being completely honest, United are better off with Cavani than they are Ronaldo. Cavani last season averaged 39.7 pressures a game. Compare that to Ronaldo who maybe has like 12 per game. And I'm not saying that Cristiano Ronaldo is a bad player, he's a fraud, or anything like that. He's just not someone who would fit into that system that United are building up for like the past two seasons. So what now though? Firstly, I don't want to hear a single thing from Manchester United fans about Ben White ever again. Secondly, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer in. In fact, Ronaldo in. Every week for me and plenty of other people around the world, is a bliss with this combination. So please, keep it up. But thirdly, does Ole Gunnar Solskjaer improve from this? We have seen him have these runs when his job is on the line, but United's next matches are Tottenham away, Atalanta away, Man City home, Watford away, which at this point in time, I honestly could see Watford getting away with a win, Villarreal away from home, Chelsea away, and then Arsenal at home. That is an incredibly difficult stretch after just losing 5-0 to Liverpool. But what do you folk think? Ole Gunnar Solskjaer in, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer out. Ronaldo in, Ronaldo out. I'd love to hear what you guys think down below, and also tell me if you did say Ole Gunnar Solskjaer out, who would be your manager? Let me know down below as well. I just wanted to say a massive thank you for all the support throughout these last few months. It's been kind of incredible. From going to FIFA content to football content was much harder than I thought it was, and it just feels like all that hard work and hours I put into this have really paid off because I can gladly say the transition period is over. So thank you guys so much for that. But anyways, right? Shout out to our patrons, Louis, Emma Chea, Dominic Griffin, Joseph Bonfante, and Tomicus. If you'd like to join the Patreon, there'll be a link down below in the description and in the annotations below. Be sure to follow my socials of my Twitter, my Instagram, follow my TikTok, we just hit 2,000, so, you know, how about 3,000? And you can also follow my Twitch, where I now have 500 followers and haven't streamed since August. But anyways, until then, I'll see you guys.